Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Ransom War by William Bennett. This is a two to three player variant of the game War, that classical card game that you play with a deck of playing cards. This has been turned into a fantastical game fantasy game of knights and zombies and goblins and mummies and vampires where you'll be battling it out between yourself and another player or even a third player in attempts to score as many points as possible in your ransom pile. Each player is going to get a certain number of cards in their deck. They're going to be flipping over cards and you'll be battling using dice. Then if you win the, ran the war you'll get the ransom and you will score points after the entire deck has run out and whoever has the most points based on the cards in your discard pile and of course their values, whether they be combinations or just simply for their gold, is the winner of the game. I'll say, tell you how to set the game up, which is really easy. How to play, also very easy. And then of course my review. Ransom War is going to come with a deck of playing cards and it's also going to come with dice. All you need to do to start the game off in a two player game is take the deck, take half of it and give it to one player and you take the other half. And of course make sure the deck is thoroughly shuffled beforehand. Then you're going to go ahead and place that deck in front of you and the other deck in front of the other player. Give each player two to two dice. You may need more or less. It's really up to you how many dice you want to use. And then, well, that's it. That's war. Okay, playing the game is a little bit more complicated, but not that much more. Each player is going to simply take a card off the top of their library, reveal it, and place it face up in front of themselves. After that, there's going to be a battle and the battle will determine who the winner is and you will gain their card and your card as ransom. You're going to first check the text of the entire card. Sometimes a card, if it has red text, will automatically defeat another card. Other times, you're going to have white text and, a, and yellow text. Uh, yellow text is usually going to be the end of game scoring points. So in this case, this character here can score you bonus points if it has a queen and a king inside their discard pile. And uh, vampires can have points as well when a princess is in the discard pile with them. Uh, other times, it could just be white text, which will say something like, if you choose to surrender the battle, then you can get a plus four value instead of a plus three. Or can you can add, add plus four to any die roll versus undead units, etc., etc. So there's lots of things that can give you special abilities. So it's red, instant, then it's white, which is special abilities, usually involving combat in some way, and then yellow, which is your victory points when you have them in the discard pile. Check it all. If there's nothing of relevance or nothing of importance that you need to actually do, then you're going to go straight into combat. Now, combat works is pretty simple. There is a gold value on the top left-hand side of your card. That is going to represent your character's speed. You will take a die, and your opponent will take a die, and you will both roll. You will then add your roll to your die value. Uh, to your gold value, and whoever has the higher value is the player who gets to attack first. Vampire has a 5 and a 2, that's 7. Princess has a 2 and a 2, that's 4. Vampire will go first. Combat begins, Vampire starts, Princess is going to defend, you're both going to roll a die. The Vampire is going to roll the die, add his value, plus the attack value, which is the top upper right hand corner icon, which is like a little hammer. So that would be a 2 and a 3, which is 5. And then my character is going to add my die roll plus my defense. Well, I have a four and I have a zero defense, which is a four. So five is going to be four. Ties go to the attacker. When you take damage, you're going to be reducing your health by via your life pool, the card portion on the bottom left hand middle area, which has a little heart. If you go to zero, which is the case for the princess, then you're going to have to discard your card or give it to the player who won. You'll be passing this over to the other player and that player is going to score and collect them into their ransom. If you have more than one health, you're simply going to reduce your, your, your point value. I would use a die and it would go down to your next lower. So if I had three health and I took that damage, I would go to two, in which case it would then go back to me, the defender, now an attacker. And I would roll my attack versus the vampire's defense. And you'd go back and forth up until the point where somebody has zero HP. And whoever that player is, is going to lose and you're going to gain the ransom. Uh, after that, uh, of course, you're going to then go to the next phase, which is drawing a card from the top of your deck, revealing it, and then doing what the cards say. We have two wraiths, and wraiths say every wraith does a point of damage to the opponent's unit. Oh, sorry, every time a wraith does a point of damage to an opponent's unit, if available, take the top card of your opponent's ransom and add it to yours. So you would just rinse and repeat. Now, in this case here, though, we actually have a war. 
because there are two wraiths on the field. And there are also some other cards that don't necessarily need to be the same, but can allow for a war. How a war happens. You will take a card from the top of your deck, place it face down on top of the main card, and they will as well. And then you're both going to reveal a new face-up card, and you're going to battle. If there was, of course, another pair or another match, <laughs> maybe two elementals or two queens, then you would go ahead and war again. But in this case, there's not. It's just a fire elemental versus a queen. And you'll do the same things that you normally would do. You check to see all the values. This one says you can roll an extra uh, die to add to your battle. If you win the battle, you must take the top two cards from your opponent's ransom. So in this case, her first swing is really hard. And the fire elemental says that an elemental match is a war, no matter what elemental it is. And at the end of the game, if you have two uh, fire elementals in your discard pile, your ransom pile, you'll score five instead of the two points of the top left-hand corner. And that's it. That's how you play the game. You'll both be rolling these dice, going back from attacking to defender up until somebody has lost all their HP, scoring all the cards if you manage to win the war as well as all the face down cards, and then displaying a new card, revealing a new card, and your opponent revealing a new card, doing what the cards say and rinsing and repeating. Eventually what's going to happen is you and your opponent are going to be left with two ransom piles at the end of the game. It'll look like this. And if, for instance, there happens to be a war when you have no cards left in your deck, you'll have to just use the cards from the top of your ransom. You'll shuffle your ransom pile and use cards in that way, just for one more time, though. And then you'll take these cards here, and you'll add up their values. You'll check the top upper left-hand corner where the coin is, and that'll score you your victory points. You'll check any yellow text boxes to see if you have any matches or pairs, and add them up. Use a calculator, a pen or a paper, or just simply your brain, and whoever has the most points in the game is the winner. And that's the game, Ransom War. An interesting take on war? What do I think about it? So Ransom War is a variant on the classic game of war, like I've said before, and it does a fairly good job of that. You're revealing cards, checking stats, checking abilities, fighting, and then the person who wins gets the cards, and rinse and repeat up until your deck runs out. And the same is said for the other player. Now, in the base game of War, if I remember correctly, once you uh, finish going through all your cards, you'll take your discard pile back, and you'll keep going up until somebody wins, but in this case that would take quite some time. So instead of having somebody just get all the cards, it's whoever has the most value in their ransom at the end of the game is the winner. There are a ton of really cool cards in this game. I love the idea of fighting other players with certain types of characters and unique abilities that are going to, A, have different types of matches, like there's a goblin war or an orc warrior, which just simply can choose to battle as a war if they would like, or having the different types of elementals go to war with other elementals. And if you have pairs of elementals in your discard pile, I call it discard, but it's your ransom pile, uh, you'll score bonus victory points. And there's also certain combinations, like like if I happen to have a princess, the king, and the queen, as opposed to their normal victory points, the king and queen are actually going to be worth 15 points apiece. Uh, there's some cool cards like the dragon here, which is just going to be a, an insta-win, which is kind of like the joker in the game war, where you flip it over and you're pretty much guaranteed to win the game, or in, this, in, the, in some cases it's the jack, I guess it just depends on your variant. But yeah, this card just is like a, an insta-win up until the point where you have to go to war with it, or it gets uh, added to your war pile. So it does all that inherently pretty well. Um, the main thing I'm not a big fan of in this game is the dice rolling, which uh, I, I, if they just, instead of having dice rolls and having this kind of constant rolling and rolling up until somebody wins, if it was just based on like a number and they just left all the text here uh, as some type of unique combination or a unique the thing that you can do with combat um, and made the combat more based on the value of the character so in the top left hand side or whatever just the combat value is what we we take into consideration and whoever has the highest wins oh unless this card has this value or this card gives these certain cards values i think i'd like it more because that's kind of what i was expecting i was expecting like flip 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 but in this case there's just a little bit more monotony of rolling these dice right so if you're not a big fan of dice chucking then this is is probably not going to be for you because that's pretty much what you're doing in this game. You're flipping over cards, checking stats, checking abilities, and then dice rolling up until one wins. Now, the cool thing about that is that technically either 
either character can win. It's possible uh, based on your stats and how much health you have. I, we did have certain instances where we were playing and characters like the mummy could win even though it had negative stats because it had so much HP and it could fight up against something like the princess which only has one HP but a little bit better stats. And so it has that cool aspect to it but what I really liked about the game was the abilities of the characters and how they combine with each other and how you're trying to score these combinations into your ransom pile. Uh, but the dice rolling was my least favorite part. Uh, additionally, I'd like to see some background art to these cards. Some of them work pretty well. I like some of the artwork. I uh, like you know, the, the unicorn here I like. Um, but I love some background uh, art. The, the card is designed well. You know the name. You know the stats fairly easily. Life is life. And the shield is your defense. And the hammer is your attack. And the gold is your speed. Which... Mm, I would say probably would be better if it was a boot, but then of course the gold is also what you use to score the game. Either way, not a big deal. No, not, no need to nitpick too hard. But yeah, I'd like to see some background art to the cards. They have a little bit more flair, a little bit more feeling of life. Um, Otherwise, though, you're getting a deck of cards that plays fairly simply and it plays a game of war. This is going to be a good kids game. It's going to be a good teen game, especially because it inherently involves certain types of math. It involves you to be checking different portions of stats that go with other other stats that can be attached to other characters. Uh, there are characters like the Lich that's going to allow you to gain valuable benefits when he is on the top of the discard pile, when he is on the field. It's this guy right here. He lets you, if he's on top of your ransom and a unit currently is fighting, um, is undead. So if he's here and I'm fighting an undead, then I get plus two in my rolls. Or if there's an undead on top of my ransom and my lich is currently fighting, I get plus two. And if a lich is on top of your ransom and a lich is currently fighting, add plus four to all rolls. So there's a whole lot of ways that this character can kind of be utilized. And he's also just a pretty good character in general. But yeah, the characters, all the different values and the different types I really, really like. And I'd just like to see more of this stuff and less of the dice rolling. But overall, it's a fun little game that reminds me of the game War. And if you're interested in picking it up, there will be a link down below in the description because I remember as a kid sitting there playing in the bowl, bowls we called this like area in school um, where we ate lunch and all that kind of stuff it was like a little amphitheater and we played war like heck and if i had this game instead i think we'd much more enjoy it but we still had fun thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game ransom war if you're interested there is a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and go ahead and pick up the game you can also go ahead and check our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more if this is more than your first video on the channel and you would like to you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button join us and we will play and show off more games a lot of indie titles some games that are more published and it's up to you to go ahead and take a look and see for yourself what you'd be interested in we do a live stream every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst on all the platforms and on wednesday on whatnot at the same time all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to having a larger ransom pile than you next time